Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The government's sugar tax on soft drinks came into force today to help tackle obesity and tooth decay, especially in children. It means a two-litre fizzy drink is now up to 48p more expensive. But some manufacturers have already cut sugar content to avoid the tax. Others, however, like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, say they won't be changing the recipes of their traditional products. Judith Moritz reports now from Halifax. A treat in the school holidays. Coca-Cola at lunchtime. Customers of all ages queuing up to quench their thirst at the National Children's Museum, Eureka. There's plenty of choice here, but sugary drinks are popular. Cork, because oh, it's nice to have, have some sugar, and Ribena because it's not got as much sugar in it. The introduction of the UK sugar tax hasn't gone unnoticed here, but for some, sweet habits die hard. If I want it and I like it, I'm going to buy it because... I can't, it's like, it's like an addiction, isn't it? It's, it's, you can't stop. <laughs> it's the same with everything. They'll find a tax for everything, saying it's healthy, but at the end of the day, trying to take food from choice away. I think it's brilliant, and it's a shame that it's taken this long to introduce it. They learn about healthy teeth here, but in England, a child has a tooth removed in hospital every 10 minutes due to decay. It's recommended that the maximum amount of added sugar in your diet is 5% of your calories. But children up to age four are consuming more than double this at 12%. And teenagers are eating and drinking more than three times as much added sugar as they should. I'm 13. I, yeah, I like fizzy drinks. I like... Sugary drinks? Yeah. <laughs> they, like, taste good, I guess. Some brands, including Fanta, Ribena and Lucozade, have already cut their sugar content, thus avoiding the tax. You've chosen Fanta yeah. today. Have you noticed a change in the taste? They've reduced some of the sugar. Just a bit. It's not major, but it is. You can, you can tell the difference. How do you find it? Um, I think it's better. At this corner shop, some drinks now cost more, despite bottles holding less. And the owner says customers have complained. The price has gone up, uh, the size, size has come down. Uh, people, all the customers are asking, uh, why did you put the price up? Some view the new levy as a tax on treats. Others say it's a much-needed boost to our health. Judith Moritz, BBC News, Halifax. A new sugar tax has been introduced, leading to a hike in the cost of fizzy drinks and juices. The aim is for the higher prices to put consumers off buying the most sugary drinks and bring about a drop in childhood obesity. Sky's Paul Kelso has this report. Uh, OK, you need to see that one. I think that one, okay, yeah. Wait, pick it up and have a a taste test for a national right, treasure. It says old. You're right. Yeah. Oh, so you can oh, tell the difference. Oh, are working still. Iron brewers have been made in Glasgow for over a century. But can anyone tell the difference now half the sugar has been removed? It's uh, not as tangy, is it? OK. Uh, it's better. Do so you prefer the old one? Yep. Old? Oh, oh, you're the first one not to get it. Oh, I would know. <laughs> I would know. Swore that was a new one. What do you think about them tampering with iron brewers? Scottish No, they shouldn't, have, shouldn't have touched it at all. No. What about people telling you how much sugar you should drink? That should be up to us if we want to decide that, because if they want to add the extra money on for the sugar, then that's fine, but don't take it out of our drinks. We're on the outbreak of an obesity epidemic, really. Um, but I think, no, the government should, should have some guidelines as well. Iron Brew has been changed to avoid a new tax on sugary soft drinks that comes into force across the UK today. With 60% of the population overweight and one in four of us obese, health officials are in favour. We're hoping it would have two impacts. One, that there will be reformulation, so there will be less sugar added to drinks. But also, we know that price matters, and we know that people uh, make a choice on price. And it will uh, start to redress the fact that we have a lot of cheap, sugary food around. Not everyone is happy. Ryan Allen has stockpiled old iron brew, with its eight teaspoons of sugar in every can, and started an online petition that has over 50,000 signatures. This is the original recipe, the last of my stock. 
something that people feel is inherently Scottish and you just they think they'd have the backbone to, to retain their original recipe. Iron Brew say their customers support them and they're not the only ones who will have to get used to it. Some companies will not be changing their recipes. Coca-Cola are not cutting the amount of sugar in their classic drink, which means this can will cost as much as another 10p. But the number of companies that have reformulated means the Treasury is now expecting to receive only half of the £500 million it first forecast this tax would raise. Evidence from other countries that have tried a sugar levy is mixed. The true test of this tax is whether it makes us a thinner, healthier nation. Paul Kelso, Sky News in Glasgow. A new sugar tax comes into force today, leading to a hike in prices for some fizzy drinks and juices. The aim is for the higher prices to put consumers off buying the most sugary drinks, hopefully leading to a decline in obesity and teeth problems, especially in children. And some dentists are calling today for the money raised to be used to fund lessons for children on how to brush their teeth properly. Well, I'm joined now by a dentist, David Gray. David, really good to see you. Thanks for coming in this afternoon. Will it make us healthier? I hope so. I certainly hope it will make a big difference both from the obesity side of things but definitely from a dental perspective. We have on average one in, uh, sorry, every 10 minutes one child is being taken into hospital to have teeth removed. Last year there were over 40,000 cases of kids having teeth removed in hospital all due to preventable decay and if we can take any measures to try and reduce the sugar consumption and lead to a reduction in these, these side effects, it will be a big benefit. Are you concerned at all that you're telling people how to live their lives. I mean, the vast majority of people aren't obese, don't have bad teeth. Why should they suffer? The majority aren't, but a significant number are. Um, something like one in five children are obese within the UK at the moment. Over two thirds of adults are overweight. Obesity is a huge problem. Now, I can only tell, tell you from the dental side of things how this is impacting us, but we know that it has huge ramifications on children and, and the potential outcomes, including fillings, extractions, uh, and the knock-on effect it has on life. Have you seen a rise? Personally, I've seen a high number of kids coming through the doors with decay consistently throughout my career. Now, I'm fairly young in my career, so I couldn't quantify if there's been a rise or not. But we know back in 2012, 2013, there were only 36,000 who had teeth removed in hospital. Last year, we had 43,000. Mm. It's dropped a little bit this year, but that is still staggering numbers of children having teeth removed. And, and the data speaks for itself. Why do you think it varies so much um, in terms of tooth decay where you live in the country? Say, for example, a child living in Lancashire or Cumbria are twice or six times more likely to develop tooth decay than a child, say, in Wessex? Well, there is a big education part of this. Mm. A lot of people are simply not aware of the impact of sugar um, and how it, how it causes damage to both our bodies and to our teeth. Yeah. And that is reflected by socioeconomic status. In poorer areas, there's higher levels of decay uh, than there are in more wealthy areas. Yeah. One of the big problems we have at the moment is not just these fizzy drinks, but other sources of sugar. Healthy alternatives, such as smoothies, they have as much sugar as a can of Coke or, or, or sometimes even higher, and yet people are going on these health kicks, which means they consume high volumes of it, leading to just the same problems. Um, you've brought some props with you, I see. Um, just give us a, a demonstration of how best you, to brush your teeth, how you're supposed to do it, because I look back to when I was a youngster, and I'm not sure, I can't remember, I've been racking my brain, whether there was ever a point when I was at school in class and somebody came in and said, kids, this is how you brush your teeth. No, and while you mention that, actually, that would be a really great thing for us to see more of. We know that this sugar tax will potentially raise £240 million for the government each year, mm. which, being an obesity-driven tax, is primarily going on obesity-fighting measures. If we can get some of that redirected to mm. dental education, that would be fantastic. Teaching teachers how to deliver oral health care uh, and supporting families in order to deliver the best care for their children. It shows how you do it. So. Taking your toothbrush, we're going to angle in at 45 degrees to the tooth. Short backwards and forwards motion, little round circles on the sides of the teeth to make sure that all of that plaque is removed. Now, one thing that we have to remember is that every surface of that tooth needs brushing. So once you've done the outside, we need to be moving on to the biting surface of the tooth and then the inside, making sure it gets all the way to the back. Electric toothbrushes are really good things for the kids to be using as well. 
One of the big benefits is that it has a timer. We want children to be brushing, and adults, to be brushing for two minutes twice a day. And too often, children aren't simply spending enough. They, they think they've got big, bigger and better things to do. If we can get a child to brush for two minutes, that'd be the way to do it. Good advice. There you have it there. Brush your teeth twice a day, two minutes. David, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here, the government says a new UK-wide tax on sugary drinks is already working, with 50% of companies reducing sugar content in their products. The levy came into force today, aimed at cutting the epidemics of obesity and also tooth decay in youngsters. But as our consumer editor Chris Choi reports, not everyone thinks it's such a good idea. <laughs> It's the sugar-coated tax rise, as some of the beverages Britain likes best become more pricey. And the most important effect is still unknown, consumer reaction. Do you think it's a good idea to do this? I think it is. I think especially children nowadays where they're so um, swayed to drinking things like that as opposed to water. Do you think it's going to work? No, not really. Why not? Because, like, they're still going to buy it, aren't they? It's part of government's plan to cut childhood obesity. They say it's an instant success because firms have already changed recipes to reduce sugar in about 50% of soft drinks. I'm allowed fizzy drinks, but only as a treat once in a while. So I, when my mum is around, we eat just healthy food, but when she's gone, my dad just spoils us rotten. On those drinks that are affected is 18p extra above 5 grams of sugar per 100 millilitres, 24p for 8 grams or more. So drinks hit by the tax will typically go up by up to 10p a can. And some pack sizes have also changed. Coca-Cola is shrinking its 1.75 litre Coke Classic bottle into a 1.5 litre. Friday night at the pub will be hit as bars, hotels and restaurants are likely to pass on the tax rise. Here it's 10p a time for affected drinks and the boss says it's totally pointless. I think it's gesture politics where as opposed to attacking the underlying problem you, you, you attack a symptom and don't address the underlying problem. Okay, I've got a little mirror here and you have a big, look, a big stretch for me. Dentists say, think of what taxpayers will save through fewer extractions. Overall, there are many drinks out there where it is difficult as a parent to realise how much sugar there is in them. Um, but if you're having them frequently and every day, that's when it can become a problem for the child. Today's new tax is making a splash, but some campaigners want similar measures on confectionery and ready meals. So after two years in the making, today's measure may not be the end point, but just the beginning. Chris Choi, ITV News.